So this is the ninth beer tribology webinar. Uh, I think I got the number right there. Um, this one is on bio-inspired surface micro and nano topography engineering for tribological applications. And uh, Professor Menzo from the University of Arkansas will give this one uh, later. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about the program uh, first. So um, it's called the Beard Webinar uh, because uh, Ralph Beard uh, helped us to start the tribology minor in 2012 at Albany University. So it's, it's an undergraduate minor for students looking to get more depth uh, knowledge into tribology. Um, we've been doing this every Tuesday, of the first Tuesday of each month at 1 p.m. Uh, I think in two, 2022, we probably won't do it as frequently because with everything getting back to normal, it's been a little more difficult to schedule. But I think we'll still do a few, um, just maybe not as frequently. And also, by the way, uh, NLGI uh, recently created an award named after Ralph Beard. So uh, uh, he's, he's definitely going to be remembered in the field for a long time. Uh, the next webinar will be December 7th uh, on chemical microstructural evolution of contacts uh, by Professor Isabella Slufarska. Um, she's a professor at uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison. So that should be a very interesting talk. So. Um, you can use the same link that was sent out today for that talk, but I'll also send out some uh, more notices about uh, this webinar as well. Uh, also, all the webinars, almost all of them, are recorded, um, and they're on our website here. I'll post a link to this uh, later. I'll send it out an email. Um, but if you want, want to rewatch or want to share any of them, feel free to, or uh, for a number of people, you know, some, I know sometimes people can't attend uh, live, so it's a good way to just go back and watch it later. Uh, so the, the minor itself, it's uh, 15 hours of coursework for students on top of their major, but it's open to uh, all students that are in science and engineering generally. Um, and it's really made, been, been made possible by support from uh, industry uh, and soci societies like STLE and LGI. Noma, uh, with scholarships. Uh, there's more information on this website. I'll share this link later as well. Um, but if you look up Tribology Minor, it's pretty easy to find information about it. Uh, we also created a graduate certificate recently. Uh, it's mostly uh, aimed toward um, people in industry look, looking to take a few courses in Tribology, and it's available online. Uh, so there's more information on our website about that as well. Uh, just wanted to say thank you to our advisory board. Uh, this was their idea to, to hold this webinar uh, during the past year. And uh, especially Ross Shaw and Maureen Hunter, they're the co-chairs of the board and uh, really appreciate all these folks' uh, help in uh, guiding the program forward. And also appreciate uh, all the support from the different uh, organizations and societal societies that have supported us over the years. Uh, so everybody, all these uh, logos you see here, they've been very supportive for the program. Yeah, so again, uh, if you have any uh, questions, um, just write them in the comment and then we'll take a look at them after uh, Min uh, presents. And then uh, just thank you for attending. Um, you're the reason we're doing this. So uh, with that, I'll introduce our speaker. It's Professor Minzo. Uh, she's the uh, 21st Century Chair of Materials, Manufacturing, and Integ Integrated Systems in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Arkansas. She's a fellow of both ASME and STLE. Um, she's also a faculty member of the Institute of Nanoscale Science and Engineering, the Materials Science and Engineering Graduate Program. She earned her BS and MS in Aerospace Engineering from Northwestern Polytechnic University in China. Uh, she also received her PhD in mechanical engineering from Georgia, the Georgia Institute of Technology in 1999, where we overlap for, I think, one year. Uh, she's director of the Nano Mechanics and Tribology Laboratory at the University of Arkansas, and also the statewide Center for Advanced Surface Engineering. Uh, she's received a number of awards, um, the Al Sontag Award in 2021 and 2013, the Edmund Bison Award in 2019, the Walter Hudson Award in 2001, 
from STLE. Uh, she also received the Faculty Distinguished Achievement Award from the Arkansas, Arkansas Alumni Association, the Career Award from NSF, uh, the Ralph Powell Junior Faculty uh, Enhancement Award from the Oak Ridge Associated Universities. Uh, so it, it's um, very happy Mink can join us today and uh, talk about her work. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rob, for your invitation and uh, kind of introduction. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join the uh, webinar. I'm very pleased to share uh, the research in my group. So um, today I will be mainly talk about surface micro nanotopography engineering uh, for tribological applications with a focus on bio-inspired uh, surface. So surface technology are uh, mission critical for many key industries such as aerospace, um, automotive, transportation, mining, and many other applications where many of the tribological components are uh, involved. But mostly in the traditional sense, uh, surface engineering focus on coating technologies. However, surface topography engineering is also very important um, in terms of uh, many applications. You may be very familiar with the uh, tire tread that is used in your uh, car tire or bicycle tires. They have uh, different patterns featuring deep grooves that help control the traction between the tire and the road. In the micro scale way, actually surface texturing can help tribological contact in many different ways. Uh, they can help generate hydrodynamic lift in the hydrodynamic lubrication, such as mechanical seals and journal bearings. And they can also um, help build lubricant film thickness in a heavily loaded uh, elasto-hydrodynamic condition or serve as a lubricant reservoir in stop lubrication and trap wear debris uh, in boundary lubrications. In dry contact, the texture can reduce real area of contact, uh, therefore reduce adhesion and friction between the surfaces. There are many uh, important applications, actually uh, successful applications of surface microtexture uh, in real applications. One example would be the cross hatched patterns that is made on the cylinder liner of the piston ring and the cylinder liner interface here. They are cross hatched, uh, fabricated by Honey method. The grooves uh, retain, helps retain lubricant and lubricate the interface between the piston um, cylinder liner and the piston ring here. For uh, the last couple of decades, there are uh, a lot of interest in using texture surface for mechanical face seal and general bearings. Uh, they have helped uh, uh, hydrodynamic lubrication also. With smaller devices, uh, many of you may be familiar, uh, some of you may not be as familiar, is that uh, in your hard computer hard drive, the recording media are uh, super smooth. There is a read-write element uh, at a slider trailing edge. Uh, those elements actually get very close to the disk surface to be able to read and write data. Because we are trying to pack more and more bits on the uh, disk, those two surfaces need to be super smooth and in order to, for the read element, uh, write element to be able to read and write uh, in the smaller and smaller bits. Therefore, the stiction or the adhesion between the slider and disk is uh, very large. Laser texturing has been applied to the inner radius of the disk to be able to reduce stiction, uh, stiction or adhesion and friction between the disk and the surface. Uh, those sliders actually land on the inner 
radius, we call it landing zone of the disk, when you power on and off your computer. And the, before the computer runs at a full speed, those slide ahead will drag on the disk. Uh, those laser textures would help reduce the contact area and stiction between the uh, two surfaces. Uh, as we uh, re shrink the device smaller and smaller, there is a, a new category of product called my, uh, microelectromechanical systems that involves both mechanical moving parts as well as electronics, uh, electrical driven parts such as sensors and actuators. Uh, those actually uh, have serious tribological challenges because they're small in size, their surface are ultra, ultra small, are smooth, uh, the, uh, the surface to volume ratio are huge, therefore surface force dominate uh, body driven force. Uh, surface texturing could be a solution to solve those issues. Um, they tend to stuck, the structures tend to stuck uh, to each other and unable to unstuck. And they also tend to have high sliding speed and cause wear very easily. Also their materials are not as good. Surface texturing could be very useful in this case, and especially uh, the device are small, we need nanoscale texturing uh, or small microscale texturing to be able to solve those issues and to enable more product at small scale. Uh, there are different fabrication methods that has been used to uh, fabricate surface micro nanotopography. Uh, each of them has benefit and drawback. Some of them are very expensive. Uh, we are familiar with laser, uh, somewhat expensive photolithography. Some of the uh, cheaper methods, uh, they don't have very good control of what kind of structure they can make and how they are distributed on the surface. Uh, some have limited uh, materials that they can handle. But lately, uh, there is a new technology called 3D nanoprinting. Uh, this technology allows any structure to be printed uh, with fine resolution. And that enables uh, a lot of surface can be fabricated. I'll give some examples uh, in my talk. But my group mainly focus on advanced surface engineering. We focus on uh, using coatings, nanomaterials, and uh, surface micro nano, uh, nanotopography uh, to uh, engineer a surface. We hope to achieve functionalities that can be of practical use. There are uh, several technologies is being commercialized uh, in my, in my, uh, out of my lab. And today I'm going to focus on surface micro nanotopography uh, with the book, uh, uh, that uh, inspired from nature. So nature uh, have plants or, or animals through millions of years of evolution. They survived uh, and adapt their surface interface nature, uh, uh, harsh environment and still be able to uh, survive. Uh, they have many interesting properties that we can learn from. Many of the materials design actually uh, has been uh, observed or inspired from nature surfaces. However, uh, biological surfaces are very complex uh, in the sense that their structure uh, is often very intricate uh, and have different materials and uh, chemistry. Also, they are self-renewable uh, after damage. They may be able to generate newer surfaces. So, uh, it is really hard to completely duplicate or re the nature surfaces. However, uh, we can perhaps simplify this, uh, the structures by identifying key features for desirable uh, functionalities. Also, if we learn uh, different features, provide different functionalities, we can maybe perhaps combine different uh, uh, functionalities from different um, species. 
the uh, two biggest challenges for uh, fabricating uh, arbitrary surface is that can we make, make them durable? Uh, for typological applications, definitely we need surface to be durable uh, to sustain many rubbing cycles. And also uh, we are able to, uh, we should, it is desirable that we can fabricate any surface we want because uh, that would provide us with the most opportunities. Um, speaking of durability, it's important because uh, a lot of times we can use different fabrication methods and each method may have limitations. Most of the time we use polymers to fabricate surfaces um, and those are not uh, good mechanical materials. And also because of the smallest uh, topographies, the pressure acting on those structures are pretty high uh, compared to a smooth surface. Therefore, uh, requires actual uh, durability of the surface. Here we show polymer surfaces, you can easily um, deform those scratched, even within one single scratch. Uh, even metals, they can smear in one single scratch. That will not be useful for topological applications or as, as a matter of fact, or, uh, probably most of the applications. Um, one example we learned from nature is the seashells, the core shell. It, seashells, they have domed shaped structure, which help them distribute uh, stress evenly. They also have layered hard and soft materials. Uh, which provide both hardness and toughness, uh, which make them very strong. We discovered uh, core shell nanostructures uh, can provide uh, structure durability. Uh, one core shell nanostructure we studied is aluminum core uh, here, covered with amorphous uh, hard shell. We used a nano indenter to indent on the surface uh, on each individual structure with and without the shell. We can see that without the shell core only, after indenting uh, using 100 micronewton force, the structure fractured. However, uh, with a core shell structure, even after using like 300 micronewton force indented, uh, there is no change in, in the net shape before and after indent, indenting. So this shows the, this structure is very um, uh, deformation resistant. And this pressure is like more than 20 gigapascal uh, pressure. We also scratch the surface, uh, made a scratch in the vertical direction and image the structures before, uh, after the scratch. What we see without a shell, the individual structures deform very severely, even under small load. Uh, where with the shell, no, no structure deformation is observable, even at much higher contact pressure. And the coefficient of friction of the textured core shell nanostructure texture surface is much lower than the core only or the smooth surfaces. Uh, we also studied the fatigue resistance of this structure. Uh, we studied by imaging it after uh, applying a cyclic loading to the structure after different cycles. With core only structure, we see after uh, 10,000 cycles is already made indent and indent continue to grow after 50,000 cycles where with quotient nanostructures, there is no, uh, not much shape, shape change between 10K and 50,000 uh, cycles. And we observe the contact stiffness, which is an indication of uh, how much contact area between the tip and, and the structure. Uh, we see a steady contact stiffness for the core shell structure where the core structure only, the contact stiffness continue to increase, which means 
the tip get more and more into the structure and change its shape. Uh, we also studied a polymer core and uh, an amorphous uh, alumina shell structure uh, with different core sizes. Uh, what we observe is that without a shell, the nanostructures can be easily removed from the surface, uh, where with a shell, uh, they not only they stay on the surface, but they don't, don't deform. Uh, even at very high contact uh, force or pressure, it's only deformed slightly. And again, those are uh, 20 gigapascal uh, pressures. Those structures reduce adhesion stiff, uh, significantly uh, compared to a smooth surface. And the core shell nanostructure reduces adhesion more uh, than uh, uh, the core only structure, adhesion between the tip and, and the structures. So that that's means now we can uh, utilize the shape and the material combination to engineering uh, deformation resistance and durable uh, structures. Uh, another example I want to share with you is the um, cartilage inspired uh, textures. Articulate cartilage in the you know, human joint, they have the pore structures uh, that helps store lubricant uh, or uh, joint lubricant, as well as separate the joint. Uh, what we study is different shapes. How does that affecting the, the uh, lubricant film formation uh, and the joint interface? Uh, we collaborated with a, a group in uh, Czech Republic, uh, use their simulator, uh, which is uh, integrated with a uh, chromatic interferogram, which we can observe through a camera, the interface between the head and the glass, transparent glass cup. Uh, from the color image here, we can determine the fluid film thickness established between, uh, at this interface. What we see that with a non-textured surface, the fluid film is very thin uh, and stays thin over the time uh, start uh, from the beginning of the swing of the pendulum means, uh, that simulates human move, movement to, to the end of the test where square-shaped dimples established a much thicker film, many times more than the flat surface very quickly. And uh, the other type, triangular uh, elliptical shape, take longer time to establish uh, and the thickness is thinner. Uh, we can also visualize here without texture, the, the film, fluid film is not uniform and thin and with square-shaped uh, dimples, uh, uniform thick film is established. That actually leads to no wear observed on the uh, surface. Uh, the other textures show slight wear uh, to a different degree. So uh, that's another uh, example where we show the different shapes of texture can affect fluid film uh, lubrication under heavily loading conditions. And in real life, many surfaces have 3D topography. It is with current technologies, it's really hard to fabricate truly 3D structures. And that's limited our surface performance. With uh, new fabrication technology, we can fabricate truly 3D uh, structures. In this case, we compared a cone structure with, we call it truly 3D because in the Z direction, they change shape compared to two and a half D structures, basically has the same shape along Z direction. So we compare with 2D base, meaning uh, the this, this cylinder here has same shape as the cone base and 2D tip uh, has the same uh, shape as a cone tip. We used uh, a new tool called Nanoscribe, uh, which uh, based on two photon polymerization, 
uh, principle. For those of you who are not familiar with two photon polymerization, essentially uh, it's applying a, a laser energy to a photosensitive polymer. Uh, only very small focal point uh, can cross-link that polymer. So just imagine laser as, your, as a pen, uh, but the size is very small. You can focus on small size, like less than 500 nanometer. So you can imagine this laser moving in a 3D space and draw structures that you designed. So that's essentially what it is. And, and we can use a variety of photosensitive polymers to make structures out of this. Um, technique. Here we show a real-time printing of uh, the surface structures. This is showing a star-shaped texture. You can see the scale bar, uh, which is 10 micron. You can see the fine features that can be uh, printed. And you can uh, essentially design different shapes very quickly and test out ideas. So this could be a very useful tool in testing uh, different uh, type of textures at uh, high resolution. So we use this tool to fabricate those three structures I mentioned. Essentially, we take a glass light, drop a photosensitive polymer on the surface. We use a high magnification lenses to focus the laser inside the polymer and wherever the laser shines, it's cross-link that point, and we can program the laser to follow any shape you want, we want. Uh, in this case, we fabricated those three types of structures. Uh, after fabrication, we can accelerate the sample fabrication by uh, making a mold and duplicate it. Uh, what we also tested is uh, using a silicon Sinonize the silicon wafer to rub against the textured surfaces and observe it uh, using a camera to see uh, the interface behavior during sliding. We also put this sample inside a scanning electron microscope and use a diamond flat end and it uh, diamond tip to uh, rub against it to see how the uh, friction and deformation behavior of the textures. Uh, here we show the print, printed structures. Uh, they have the nice design shape. And then if you observe here in this area, we show the interface of those three, uh, three structures. Obviously you can see this uh, two and a half D tip structure has a lot of wobble um, rocking motion. Uh, so does the two and a half D base, slight rocking here, but the core structures uh, rubs very smoothly. And that's re uh, that is because the friction coefficient is low for the core structure due to the small tip area. Uh, the two and a half D base has higher friction because it has large contact area. And, and the two and a half D tip start with low coefficient friction, but because it's small in, in size, it's uh, less mechanically strong. So it can get bent very easily under load and collapse uh, some of them. After multiple cycles, some of them get removed, uh, causing a drastic increase in friction and then uh, a large degree of rocking. So also one other thing we observe here, uh, we observe the lateral force change as we uh, slide uh, across the two and a half D tip structure. You can see it start to bend and then eventually collapse. Uh, the the ac action of collapsing actually cause the friction to become negative because it give a push to the surface. So combined with the in situ observation of the behavior, uh, deformation behavior, we can explain some of the uh, measure, frictional measurement signals uh, 
trying to get a complete picture of how the surface intact uh, and the load and friction. And from this study, we know that uh, 3D, truly 3D structure like this cone structure has benefit of both reducing friction and also uh, reduce wear also. Uh, another example I want to share is a, uh, a hexagonally arranged dimples connected by V-shaped grooves. This is a structure or uh, topography that is inspired by frog toes. Frog toes, they have hexagonally uh, arranged grooves, helps them actually uh, push the liquid water away so that they can secrete um, adhesive uh, liquid to adhere strongly to the surface. In our case, we want to utilize uh, the hexagonal ar arrangement, which can actually uh, move fluid uh, efficiently across the surface. We also want some of the fluid to be retained in those dimples so that the whole surface is lubricated. Uh, in this case, we combined bio inspiration and our uh, human design. We study the groove lengths, width, and depths, uh, how they affect the friction coefficient uh, between a piston ring segment and, and the texture surfaces. Uh, here we show a little bit higher magnification image of the dimples as well as V-shaped grooves. We also fabricated uh, uh, idealized crosshatch and compared with a duplicated crosshatch pattern from the real uh, piston uh, cylinder liner. What we found is that our best design uh, reduced the coefficient of friction by 22% if we compare it to a smooth surface uh, and reduced 10% if we compare it with a uh, horned crosshatch uh, duplicates. Yeah, um, so that's uh, uh, that. And then uh, switching gears to micro nano hierarchical textures here. Um, we know that reptiles, they live in sandy environment. Uh, they are known, their skins are known, or scales are known to be very durable. In some cases, uh, they have low friction too, even smaller, uh, coefficient friction smaller than uh, PTFE, uh, but that's probably mostly due to their surface chemistry rather than topography. Anyway, we studied the oscillated skink which has similar scale structure. Uh, you have big scales, if you zoom into it, it has this uh, uh, wavy-like ridges. Uh, if you look closer uh, at the end of the waves here, you have this scallop shape. Uh, in this case, it's really hard to fabricate, exactly uh, duplicate. What we did is we, uh, idealize it, we were able to fabricate wave shape uh, with nanoscale height, uh, but it, uh, it's hard to duplicate the scallop. Uh, but even with that, we compared with a smooth surface and using a ball to rub against the surface and compared friction and wear uh, behavior of those uh, two types of surfaces. We use three different loads, 20 gram, 50 gram, and 100 gram. Those are very high contact pressure considering its point contact here. Uh, but the biggest observation is that the wear track width has significantly reduced due to the even the small nano textures. And also, uh, of course, the wear degree generated is less uh, and less transferred to the counterface balls. Study the mechanism of how this uh, texture could reduce wear. Uh, one observation is that the texture provide less area of contact and reduced adhesive wear of the surface. Uh, this is a smooth surface is textured. You see those adhesive wear uh, signs. And also the textures can generate tiny cracks 
uh, that is be able to absorb uh, energy where the the um, smooth surface they generate large cracks. Um, so that's another application. And then uh, there is another micro nano hierarchical texture application. Many of you may be familiar with lotus leaf or self-cleaning uh, lotus effect or self. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, people study this, uh, try to mimic lotus effect. Uh, those who live, they live in muddy environment, but their surface is very clean. That is because their surface have this microstructure. On top of it has nano uh, nodules of waxy material. That makes the surface energy extremely low. When um, contaminants land on the surface, they, they actually like to stick to water, which has high energy than, than the uh, surface. When there is wind, uh, the water will collect those uh, contaminants or dust and roll away, and therefore achieving self-cleaning property. So self-cleaning lotus leaf, many, many people try to fabricate surface to mimic them. So we also try to study the hierarchical structure, how does uh, the friction and deformation uh, and durability relate to uh, the uh, surface wettability too? Because for those to be uh, self-cleaning surface to be useful, we also need durability. Here, in this case, we printed tapered micropillars. On top of it, we printed nano hairs, short and long, uh, in terms of their lens. Here we see a visual here, no hair, micropillar, micropillar with short hair and longer hair, long, I call it long hair. We observed their friction and deformation behavior inside an SEM again here. So what we observe is that for the surface to be super hydrophobic, like be able to self-clean, uh, we need long hair. Long hair give us a water contact angle of more than 150 degree, which is super hydrophobic. And also their contact angle, no matter how you measure it, uh, it's the same. That means you have less hysteresis. This, those two properties enable self-cleaning, where the short hair and uh, uh, Microstructure only, they are not be able to achieving water contact angle above 150. There, there is also um, a, a difference in advancing and receding angle, uh, which means those surfaces may not be able to self clean. However, what we observe is that as far as friction force or coefficient friction, the short hair gives the lowest coefficient friction. Uh, obviously, the micro. Uh, because of the reduction in contact area, you can see uh, the contact area between uh, the tip is defined by the textures. Now, long hair supposedly have the same contact area, but they actually give a slightly larger uh, for uh, uh, coefficient friction. That is because they actually bent. If you recall the uh, two and a half D, tip structure, they bend easily from the negative friction. And the bending caused the contact area to increase compared to the short hair. That's why they give a higher friction. So from this study, what we learned, um, the structure need to be durable. It can be functional, but it need also uh, durable as well. Another observation we, uh, we did is that the, the bending of the long hair actually cause the microstructure also bend. So there is a coupling between the deformation of short and long hair. Uh, this tells us when you, we design hierarchical structure, we need to be uh, mindful about the coupling uh, between different length scales. Uh, of course, in the end, uh, many natural surfaces have so many different properties. Uh, it will be desirable to be able to fabricate any surfaces at which 
Uh, here we developed a process where we can take an arbitrary surface, whether it's from nature or man-made, uh, we image it through high you know, uh, resolution uh, microscopy, and then we turn it into printable uh, surfaces where we use two photon polymerization to selectively polymerize uh, desired places on the surface to form the textures. We then remove the excessive and polymerized structures. And then we're left with the structure we want. If we want to increase the durability, we can add a, a um, hard layer on the surface to form the caution structure to increase its durability. Uh, we tested a few different uh, examples some from nature, some from man-made uh, or actually naturally occurring. Uh, the top row is the imaged surface and the bottom row is a printed surface. Uh, you can see it's um, it, the printed surface actually shows good fidelity to the image surface. Uh, the banana peels, the eastern wahoo and a dust on the coin. Uh, you can see the dust on the cone because of the height is, is uh, uh, 54 micron, it's a little bit big and there are some defects on the printed structure, but more or less for uh, this overall, the printed uh, structure has good fidelity with the image uh, structures. We then uh, selected two surfaces to test their uh, wettability and also uh, friction performance. The, the two surfaces are banana surface inside, inside a banana peel, uh, and then uh, daffodil surfaces. The, this gray column here is a printed structure. You can see you know, we more or less translated uh, the imaged structure to reality. However, due to the printing revolution, we can see maybe in some cases we added additional roughness. Uh, in another case, in this case, we probably added some uh, roughness that was not originally there. Uh, in, due to the, the fact we need to print it layer by layer. And uh, in some cases, we missed some of the fine structures. Uh, but overall, if you look at it, the uh, printed structure follows image structure pretty well. But more importantly, uh, we see a 42% reduction in the coefficient of friction uh, in a lubricant condition compared to a smooth surface. That tells us the nature has figured uh, it all. Uh, it actually shows the highest reduction compared to the other textures I studied. Anyway, this is just a randomly pick uh, 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 from nature surfaces. This is not optimized or not the best surfaces. So in summary, um, I mentioned to you a lot of surface micro nanotopography applications and uh, bioinspiration is very important because uh, we can learn a lot from uh, nature surfaces that has uh, many functionalities. Uh, we emphasize the structure durability is very important, especially at small scale because they need to sustain higher pressure uh, than a smooth surface. We also uh, mentioned the shape of the structure uh, matters when it comes to generating hydrodynamic or, or or film thickness, uh, elastohydrodynamic lubricating film thickness. And truly 3D uh, structures provide an advantage over 2D structures in terms of uh, achieving both friction reduction and wear and durability. And uh, we can combine uh, bioinspiration and um, human designs to achieve uh, better surfaces. And, um, and also we need to be mindful in designing hierarchical structures where you could see a deformation coupling between different land scales. And finally, uh, 
it will be desirable to be able to fabricate arbitrary surfaces with arbitrary topography and especially learn from nature, uh, they already optimized uh, some of the surface topographies. So I'd like to uh, thank uh, the funding uh, agencies and the entities that uh, supported my research over the years, and also my uh, group members and uh, collaborators who have uh, contributed to the uh, work presented here. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, check in the chat here. Yeah, if you have any questions, it's right in the chat. So I'll start, I guess, get things rolling. You mentioned, I think, the daffodil had very low friction. Yeah. So uh, why do you think it had such low friction? Um, really, it's because of the, the structure itself. Um, the, if you look at the, it has tall bumps. It, it's it's related to the surface area in contact most for the most part. And a lot of nature surfaces actually, they have those nodule shape. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, I've worked with some uh, people in dynamics and there's this common saying that uh, perfectly smooth means uh, that they say if it's perfectly, perfectly smooth, there's no friction. But you know, it's like your work shows that's really not true. The roughness uh, or the features, and especially controlled features, can reduce the friction. So we do have a question. Uh, this is Jeff Lentz. Um, is there an advantage to avoiding a regular pattern? I noticed that the image of the frog skin was a random pattern of pentagons and hexagons. Uh, is there an advantage to avoid re regular pattern, right? Yeah, that's the question. Yeah, I believe so. Um, I, it depends. I think there may be advantage depending on the uh, real uh, application scenario, what kind of load pressure you are sustaining. Yeah, the example would be for nature, right? They, they look, uh, their surfaces have some kind of statistical distribution, even though they, uh, they are nodule-like. That probably, for the most part, is not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Any other questions out there? Let's see. Yeah, here's... Uh... Yeah, please type your comments in and I'll, uh, I'll read them out. Someone asked about that. So I'll wait to see if they type anything out here. Yeah, regarding the regular pattern, there's also uh, a practicality to uh, yeah, Nate, I, I see what, what the question means now. I think if you go back to the frog toes, that's, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's probably the question mean. You know, in the real structure here is not ideal, the hexag hexagonal arrangement. Yeah. Yeah, for, for real application, it might be really hard to, to do that because each irregularity translates into a data point we need to record. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Did you measure, I mean, I don't know, is there any examples of, I don't think you measured friction for these cases, but the hexagonal versus frog, you know, any example where you had a perfect 
uh, yeah. surfaces as replicated in its perfect geometry versus the yeah. natural geometry. That's right. The uh, one of this here control is a um, is a flat surface. Mm -hmm. Liner is a real the duplicate of piston liner. Okay. Uh, there um, probably I, we we had a, a comparison with the ideal one. I wonder. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not seeing it here. Yeah, I think we compared compared it. Uh, I don't recall the the. Uh... Okay. No, there, there there is one dimple without dimple. Let's see, width depth zero. Yeah, that's that's probably no. Yeah, that's this one. So, the ideal one that's actually better than than the. Do we get uh, all right, so we have um, a couple of questions here. Uh, first, it is a good and complex endeavor. We're taking natural surfaces. However, the difficulty I, uh, there's a word that's missing here, the function of the species to the microgeometry. To, the difficulty I see to link, I think is what they meant the function of the species to the microgeometry and the subsurface mechanical properties as they play a crucial role in preserving the structural integrity of the species. And I'm not sure if I, I think they're just uh, commenting on uh, The difficulty to link the function of the microgeometry and the subsurface mechanical properties. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I I'm not seeing it in the chat box. So is it like commenting on how the texture surface affect the subsurface mechanical property? Okay, here's how is the link between structure and properties is accommodated. So I think they're asking about, you know, you talked a lot about the structure, but what about the properties, mechanical properties, I'm assuming. So in a, in a, I think what they mean is in a, you know, biological, mechanical properties probably a lot different than what you're making usually. So, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, for, in general, we have two category of textures. One is a recessed pocket. One is a protruding uh, structure. And recessed pocket normally are applied to lubricated conditions. Of course, there's a balance between um, removal of material which weakens the surface. Uh, but for a lot of lubricating conditions, the pressure applied is lower. And that would uh, making dimples will not affect the mechanical property that much. But the protruding one, once uh, the mechanical property are important uh, because they need to sustain high pressure. That's why uh, we need to incorporate some kind of 3D geometry or core shell structure to help uh, smartly distribute the stress uh, on, on the surface. So I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, I got that. So yeah, you're talking about the hardening the um, surfaces to make them wear less. I guess kind of uh, change the question a little bit. Are there any cases where like uh, with a textured surface that the biological material the, the so or a softer material would actually work better? Mm, for, yeah, for tribological applications. Yeah, I haven't, yeah, mostly I'm dealing with hard material, but I you know, I can imagine uh, Right, in your, your body, inside your body, your eye, eye lid and also the cartilage, they are not super hard materials. 
uh, yeah, in, in some cases, even tribological applications, soft material would work better. But for the most, most mechanical applications, I think the, the, uh, we need harder materials. So here's another question. Uh, while texturing, while texturing reduces friction due to adhesion and boundary lubricated contact, it also increases contact pressure on the texture. This can also increase friction due to plastic deformation. How to design textures in such cases uh, and applications to reduce friction? Yeah, that's in general, that's a case. But I also showed that uh, um, if you look at the core shell nanostructure here, in, it, in this case, uh, we have more than 20 gigapascal pressure that is applied and still didn't show any deformation. So we just need to uh, apply, apply uh, the structure, uh, especially caution type of nanostructure. Uh, you know that you see a lot of domes, they are there because when you apply a load, all the stresses are dis distributed uniformly on, on the shell. Uh, that helps them sustain higher load without deformation. Uh, those type of structures are needed and also um, some mechanism of uh, uh, preventing crack would be layered structure with soft and hard material. Uh, that makes the surface more complicated, of course. Not every uh, application requires uh, such complication, but there are, there are certain ways that you know, we can uh, use, use uh, structure design uh, using multiple materials or different structure hierarchies or shape to accommodate uh, the high load to uh, smartly distribute the, the stress. All right, any more last minute questions? I don't think so. But uh, thank you again for giving the talk. I think it was very interesting. Um, anything else you'd like to close with? Anything you'd like to say? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, you, you know, Rob, for the invitation again. And thank you, everyone, for uh, taking the time uh, here. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that Rob is doing a tribology minor. It, it helped trans uh, the the student uh, in, in the field. And the tribology field is really interesting. You can see a lot of different things you can work on. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you again. Thank you.